the EP Podcast. Heard everywhere podcasts can be found. And always at the eppodcast.com. Joining me on the phone line right now, the mayor of Evergreen Park. It's very nice for him to take a few moments out of his day and join us here on the EP Podcast. James Sexton, how are you, sir? Everything's well here, Chris. Hoping everybody else in Evergreen Park is uh, healthy and happy. How are you doing? Before we get into anything else, like what what, what is what is your day turned into now? And how's everybody doing at home and the fam? I know you got a you the Sextons. You're all spread out. You got the kids, the grandkids, and everything. How's everybody doing? Everybody's doing fine. Uh, they locked down for a couple weeks now with school being closed. Uh, I continue to get here to the office and try and manage things as best I can. Uh, We've got uh, first responders, fire and police out there uh, doing their regular job. We've got street department out there doing their jobs. So not much has changed from a, a public service standpoint. Well, what I've noticed is, uh, first of all, one of the big changes, and I, and I think it's a great thing that you're doing, is the the weekly letter that you're sending out to those that are signed up for the emails. Uh, it shows up in my inbox and, uh, and and many people around Evergreen Park. I think it's very nice that you're you know, giving words of encouragement and keeping people updated uh, through that through that letter thing. Where, where did it, was that your idea? Did 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 your wife help you out with that? That was my good friend Glenn Panuski. Okay. So uh, Glenn should get all the credit for that, passing on information that we think is pertinent um, to our to our village residents. How difficult is this right now to to govern? Because when we're sitting at home or watching TV, it's not like you can just sit there and yell, I want to have a press conference like Lori Lightfoot can have, you know. But I, I, I equate it essentially with the fact that the governor's kind of stepped up and made decisions across the entire state. She's pretty much in the same boat that you are. So when she has like these things, like just the other day, like a beautiful day outside, she gets very upset. There's a lot of people that are down at the lakefront. They shut down the lakefront there around Evergreen Park. I didn't see that kind of craziness. Like I walked by Klein Park. I got outside when it was nice the other day, but everybody was staying separated. I didn't see anybody in the park. People were doing a good job of staying out of there. Have you run into any instances since this thing started where you've had to like, we, we've had to send somebody out and be like, hey, folks, break it up. You're too close to each other. Or, this is closed. You can't go here. Or has everybody done a pretty good job? They've done a pretty good job, Chris. We have had a couple of calls with the kids being in the parks together. Um, and our young folks need to realize that they could be carriers uh, and uh, bring this home to mom or dad or grandpa and grandma. So we're asking them to keep their safe distance. But again, it's very difficult to be in your own home for two weeks. No school, no social interaction. Um, It's very difficult for these kids. But we ask them to just hang in. Uh, Hopefully this thing will be getting better and just abide by all the state and federal rules that they are, are passing down. We've talked to a couple different local businesses and those that were able to stay open and do curbside have said that the response has been overwhelming with the amount of people in the neighborhood that have done whatever they can to try to keep them open and help them out. On the other hand, we've had a couple of local businesses. I've talked to some business owners. They just couldn't stay open. And, you know, I I get the range of emotions from don't worry, we're going to get through this to I've actually heard one say, I don't know, this could ruin me. Is there anything that you guys are talking about now? And and if you're not, it's understandable because there's so much right now to cover. But is there anything going on like right now where Evergreen Park as a village is thinking, what could we do when things start to reopen here for some of the businesses that got hit the hardest? Well, it's a little early for that because we're not sure when they're going to reopen and how how we would quantify who was open and who wasn't open. There is some federal money going to be sent down through the pipeline, um, and we'll take a look at that at that point. But I just encourage everyone to use our local restaurants. I think it was in a couple of the uh, notes we sent out, uh, buy American, shop Evergreen. Uh, We have to support our local people and keep them there for the future. Have you been introduced now to video conferencing? We had Kelly Burke on last week, and uh, it was funny. We were talking about how hard it is to talk to everybody that you need to talk to while you're doing 
government business. Uh, my parents just figured out how to FaceTime last week because they've never had to do it before because their grandkids are so close to them, and now they're trying to keep their distance. Have you been introduced to this uh, yet? Oh, yeah, we've got a lot of this going on, a lot of phone conversations, a lot of websites, a lot of teleconferencing, and uh, it's it, yes, it's a new way to do business. I used to <laughs> like to... I used to like to talk in person and shake hands, but I guess that won't be the new norm. No, it's very different. I know when I go and I record the morning mass now for Queen of Martyrs and, and Holy Redeemer, which I told them I would do for them, even like the that's the one time I have any interaction outside of the house. And it's funny because like we're, I'm standing like five feet back from the priest as we're talking before we start the film. And I'm just so used to that contact like you we've. We bumped into each other before. We're both the same kind of person. You walk right up. It's a big handshake. How are you? Blah, blah, blah. And now it's it, it's it's weird to try to remember, don't do that, because every instinct in your body is still telling you act normal, and you have to keep remembering that. Well, there'll be a new normal. I know that a lot of wives want this thing over, and a lot of mothers and fathers want this thing over. <laughs> so, so there is some, some real separation from, from each other. You know, I, I think uh, one thing is important, Chris, that we think of all those that are working, uh, first responders, hospital people, restaurant people, uh, grocery people, et cetera, et cetera, uh, and we appreciate what they do. In the meantime, we have to think about those that are less fortunate and are not working. So I'm asking everybody in Evergreen Park to think kind. Uh, do something nice for somebody that needs something nice done. Uh, that could be your elderly neighbor. It could be a person who is out of work. It could be thanking those hospital and first responders. Um, we need to try and clean this thing up. Uh, it can't become political like it is on a national level. Uh, they make fools of themselves. Uh, just here this morning that one representative is going to hold up the vote on getting this uh, stimulus package down uh, because I don't know why he wants to get his name in the paper. It's not time for politics. It's time for action. Excellent. Mayor Sexton, I appreciate you taking a few minutes of your day to talk with everybody. Any final words you want to give everyone? I, th I feel like you said everything and I feel I feel more positive just after talking with you. Well, that's what we're here for. If anybody needs us, they certainly can reach us on our web uh, or they can call and leave a message and we will follow up with them. Uh, but in the meantime, everybody stay uh, separated, stay healthy, and uh, before long, this thing will be over. Well, you stay well as, uh, as well, sir, and I appreciate you coming on. You and your family, Chris. Thank you. Bye-bye. Building relationships, supporting the community, and service. These are the things that Country Financial stands for. They're more than just an office you may pass by as you drive through Evergreen Park. They're neighbors who lend a helping hand and support the fabric of your community, including charitable organizations, sports, financial education, and civic organizations. And since Country is already your neighbor, they want to get together and chat. Call your local Country Financial representative, Mike Thauer, today at 708 425 1559 to talk about the things that are important to you and how he can help you protect them. You are listening to the EP podcast. My name is Chris Lanuti, my partner, Hannah, not here. We are socially distancing now, but she is on the line and we will be able to still do a show through the wonders of modern technology. I want to say thank you to the mayor of Evergreen Park, James Sexton, for joining me. He was on our Friday live podcast that comes out 4 p.m. each and every Friday. We've added that to our schedule. We also have audio from our Wednesday live podcast this past Wednesday at 7 p.m. You will be able to tune in Wednesday at 7 p.m. live or Friday live at 4 p.m. or both times. And all you have to do is go to the eppodcast.com and download the Podbean app. If you're not prompted to the moment you go on there with a device that downloads apps on your desktop, look for the download the app button. On your mobile phone, click the drop-down bar on the front page and download. You'll be notified when we're live, but for now, each and every Wednesday night at 7 p.m. and each and every Friday at 4 p.m., we are live taking your calls, and you will hear longer versions of what you're hearing on the Monday regular podcast of some of these interviews. Plus, we've been taking some great calls. We're going to get to one later on here in the show. 
Before we move forward, one of our regular advertisers, the Crazy Crab, had closed for a short time to get things set up a little bit better. They have reopened now with online ordering Uber Eats and curbside pickup only. It's a limited menu this point going forward, 1 p.m. to 8 p.m., but if you're looking for some Crazy Crab, www.thecrazycrabchicago.com. And I'm social distancing and... I'm standing outside today. It was a beautiful day and everybody's out today. I had this moment where I had to make a decision. It was so weird, Hannah. And I want to know what you think that I should have done before you find out what I, what I did. I'm moving the garbage cans out to the curb on 99th street. And on the other side of the street, I see a woman and her son riding along on their bicycles and her phone goes off and she reaches for her phone, sticks her foot inadvertently into her uh, tire and flips over the front of her bike. (laughs) <laughs> just completely wipes out in front of me. I mean, she's like, you know, 45 year old woman, just boom. And she just wipes oh, out. No. Kid doesn't even notice until he gets halfway down the block. I'm like, are you okay? I'm like yelling across the street and she's starting to get up. And my first instinct would normally be to run over and help her up. But I'm standing there looking at her going, I don't know. She looks like nope. she survived. I don't, I don't think I need to get into close contact with her, but I'm waiting. Cause I'm like, if she's, if she's actually hurt, I'm going to have to go over there. Right. But I like, right. like, I, it was like the weirdest thing to have to make that decision. Would you have run over there? I I don't know, because in this case, could they be, you know, saying, oh, harassment or whatever, because they're trying to give me a virus. I don't harassment? know. People are crazy. Yeah, people are crazy <laughs> yeah. right now. When you fall off a bike, remind me to not pick you up. John Brand is on the I'm phone with us. Right he now. is the owner of Open Outcry, and he's one of the, the few restaurants, uh, bars that have found a way to operate and I could tell you're doing well John because I called up tonight to make my order and I had to call three times before I got through because you guys are busy how's things been going as you would expect the you know Evergreen Park the Beverly Morgan Park community Mount Greenwood uh, these are the type of communities that uh, when these type of things happen you feel really fortunate you operate in these sort of communities they they are going out of their way to support small business not just us but all all the bars and restaurants that are open right now, all the small retail shops, it's been incredible. It's been humbling, frankly. Um, and yes, the phones the phones have, uh, for dinner time, the phones have not stopped ringing since we did a complete mm-hmm. pivot in our business and got into the delivery and curbside uh, pickup business, I think, last Tuesday. Well, before we get into any more questions here, and I got a few of them for you because I, I, I'm just, uh, first of all, I love your brewery. We've been going in there, my family and I now, for you know, a couple of years. I mean, so, since since you open, I think we are we've been walking in the door. And I I ordered four different crawlers, is what you call them, because they're they're can they're giant cans, right? Thirty two ounce cans. Right, they're big, thirty two ounce demand in the brewery when people order them. Okay, so they're sealed in in the brewery when when people order them up. Okay, so I got the opening bell. I got the speculator, which was a great deal because tonight we ordered the margarita pizza and a, and one of these thirty two ounce cans was nineteen bucks. That was a great deal because that's right. a lot of beer. Wow. People don't realize what 32 ounces is what you're getting. Uh, I got the Driscoll and I got Dark Pool. So what if you had those four sitting in front of you right now, what would you open up? Well, uh, how? Uh, what time do you have to get up in the morning? Because every beer you just listed <laughs> except this is a banger. So stay hydrated if you're going to drink those. Um, I, well, uh, let's go. Uh, what, what do you what do you what are you drinking these days? What do you like? What's um, what's what are you craving? I'm leaning towards the Driscoll because I had an IPA already today, and I know that that's a that's a double IPA, right? It's a double IPA. Um, tons of citrus notes in that. The hops we use in that beer uh, are presenting a ton of citrus: tangerine, orange peel, uh, some pineapple notes. It's also it's also pretty high uh, in terms of the alcohol content. You're looking at a you're looking at a 11 percent beer. So thirty two ounces of that is almost equivalent of drinking a bottle of wine. So just be careful. I can do that. I, hold on a second. Let me open this up. There we go. Oh, that, that <laughs> smells good. I needed a beer to drink while we were talking, and I, I was like, well, I'm going to drink one of his beers while we're here, so I'm going to try to Driscoll out. I'm going to give that a nice little pour. I, I'm wondering, and I, I wanted to ask a bit, uh, one of the businesses this question. I'm glad you're on the line tonight with me. I, I'm wondering if you're learning things about your business like, hey, we could probably do this when the world goes back to normal, or we could do a version of this when the world goes back to normal. Because I have a friend of mine, Hannah's husband, who's, who does a, a music school, and he's teaching all of his kids online. And I talked to him today, and the guy was giddy. He's like, nobody misses any lessons. He's like, I want to keep doing this forever. He's like, I sit in my house, and I teach guitar. Like, and So, I mean, like, is there anything where you're watching it right now where you're like, man, 
down the line, I might, I might even do this. I might do delivery or, you know, or, or is this just while this is going on and then you, you just want to get back to business as usual. We've talked about it. You know, you've been, you've been in the brewery on a, on a uh, Thursday, Friday, Saturday night when it's really busy, especially during the summer when the rooftop beer garden is open and, we could have as much as 250 people on the property drinking beer at the same time. The problem with the delivery business, we tried the delivery business in the in the past and it was very popular. The problem was that it was reduced, it was slowing down our ticket times for the restaurant. So we made a decision about a year and a half ago to not do deliveries, even though it was something that it's something that we wanted to do. However, um, we've learned a lot being forced to pivot our business on a dime and learn delivery and curbside pickup. Uh, while drinking from the fire hose on it, we've learned a lot. So it is something we we're talking about. We maybe maybe this is something that we want to continue to do. It's such an interesting setup because it looks like a food truck basically, but your kitchen is over on one side, and then you have the bar on the other side. And you, you know, if you want to go get some food, you go over there to go get the food. And when you, then you got the bar, and you, and you got a great selection that's there. Your selections have gotten more numerous, I would say, over the last year. And it feels like you guys have hit your stride, I feel, in the last, let's say, nine months. Selection of beers got really big. Even when I walk in there now, the place is hopping, this current situation excluded. What did it take? Like, when all of a sudden did you feel like all of a sudden you guys had hit the sweet spot? Because it seems like you were rolling before this whole thing happened. Yeah, that's a great question. So uh, my, my background, I, I was... Uh... You know, I was an accountant for 20 years. I did I did regulatory clients work in the futures industry for just under 20 years before we before I decided to get into this business. So my learning curve was pretty steep. And on top of that, opening up a bar, a restaurant, and a brewery in and of itself for even restaurant veterans is is like moving mountains. It's a very difficult thing to do. So it, it takes a while for a new a new bar or restaurant to dial things in. And we certainly went through, you know, those initial growing pains as well. But fortunate, fortunate for us, we were successful from the beginning. People liked the concept. People, at, at first it was a little unusual, especially on the south side of Chicago where you walk into a place and open seating concept, community table seating concept. Uh, uh, you, you sit down and, and you have, you have, full service on the drinks. But when you go to eat, you have this, this concept where you have to go to the food, indoor food truck and order your food. And then we run it out to you. Uh, all new things for the, the, the neighborhoods around here. And, but once people got the hang of it, uh, we started to gain traction. And I think you're right, Chris, I, you know, when you start a brewery too, learning your brewing schedule and keeping that pipeline full and understanding what your community and what your guests, what your customers want in terms of beer and beer styles. It takes a little, it takes some time to, to, to dial that in as well. And, and I think you're right in the last year, especially since, uh, since our, our head brewer, Will Turner started about a year ago, we've, we've, we feel we're getting more and more comfortable every day, you know, and then, and then this happens, right? So we have to pivot again and relearn how to run the business again. But uh, we are, I can tell you, man, I'm really looking forward to getting back to normal and seeing everybody in the tap room as opposed to being on their doorsteps, delivering pizzas to them. I think I feel the exact same way. And you know, what's incredible. You brought it up there. Will Turner, your brewer, originally we were going to sit down and you were going to come down here to my nine foot homemade Oak bar this week. And we had already planned it out weeks in advance because Will is, lives in Evergreen Park. He's an Evergreen Park guy. And he originally was up at Revolution Brewing and he came down and I feel like some of the concepts he brought, I'm a big beer guy. I've talked about it before on the show. I've had a craft beer podcast that I've done for over a decade. And I, I do love the concept of what you're doing right now. The, the food came, it was hot, it was ready. You did a great job. You would think you'd have been delivering for a long, long time. What's your schedule right now? Like what like if somebody wants to order from Open Outcry, what are your hours right now and how do they do it? We're doing lunch and dinner. So we'll start taking calls at 11 a.m. We stop taking them at 7 p.m. Uh, and we'll uh, we'll run in you know, the kitchen. The, the ticket times have been about 40, 45 minutes. So if you call closer to 7, we'll have pizzas at your house by, we'll call it 8-ish. Um, all the beers on our website that you'll see in the beer tab on our website are available for crawlering. Uh, you can call, you can order both the food and the beer. We'll package both the beer and the, and the food together and deliver both at the same time. You don't have to order food to get beer and you don't have to order beer to get food. We'll deliver either one. Uh, I'd say, I'd say our deliveries have been maybe 70% beer and food and 15 and 15% just 
food and just just beer. And it's been it's been busy. Like you said, Chris, you called earlier and I'm sorry you couldn't get through. We're actually I've been we've been uh, calling Comcast every day for the last five days trying to get somebody over to to add some additional phone lines. Um, so hopefully we'll have that issue resolved in the coming days. Uh, but if you call, we'll, we'll get you we'll get your order in. We'll get you paid up. Uh, and then we'll get the food to you hopefully within 45 minutes to an hour. The service was incredible tonight. I, I was glad you were coming on the show. I, I've done this now a couple times with a couple of different places where I know they're going to be on the show. And I'm like, well, let's let's try out their delivery thing. You you guys were were flawless. Everything. It was so funny. They actually said an hour and it was 530 and the doorbell rang at exactly 630. And I looked at my wife and I said, have you ever had that happen before? where somebody gives you the time and they actually ring the bell the moment that they show it. Like it was right on the dot what they had said they were going to do. You would think you guys have been delivering forever. I, I wanted to ask you a question about the Dixie Highway Brewery Trail. You guys are a part of it. There's a, there's a lot of breweries that are along that trail. I follow a lot of them on social media. They're all trying to do something. It's something that my wife and I are trying to do because we love breweries, is that we're trying to make sure that if we buy beer, we're buying from the breweries. If they're open right now, I want to keep them open. And I and so I'm trying to buy my beer. So like we're not going anywhere else to get beer. I told her when the beer supply runs out, we're we're calling open outcry and I'm getting myself four or five crawlers. Like I'm just gonna keep those in the fridge because I would rather buy my beer from them. The big guys are gonna survive. I wanna make sure you guys are okay. Do you talk to any of the other guys on that trail? Like, have you guys like kind of been like, hey, what are you doing? What's working? Is, is it like a, a come together moment with other businesses? Like, you know, how are we going to make it? Not only are we comparing notes, but I'll give you an example of how congenial the beer community still is. Even though there's more breweries entering the space and it's getting a little bit more competitive. Uh, but yeah, we talk. And for example, uh, we ran out of crawler carriers. Uh, two days ago. So I called up Mark Kokel down at One Trick Pony in Lansing and asked him if he had any extra ones. And not only did they come and, come and pick them up, but he refused to take any money for it. So uh, that, that, that's, that, that's that's what the beer community is, is like. Um, and I think that's also one of the reasons why breweries are seeing o- an overwhelming amount of support just because of the culture of these businesses and how people people get into into beer for the right reasons usually and that that transcends and translates to the way they serve their customers and i think that's why customers and and, and everybody's supporting breweries so hard right now you were saying like you know you had like you know like you said change your business on a dime drinking from a fire hose um did you expect it to to be successful at first or were you did you have any benchmarks you were trying to hit or anything more than one was going to be a success like what what were you you had to be nervous going into this transition for sure right I, in a situation in an unprecedented situation like this i don't think anybody could have any expectations uh about about anything however i will and, and what i'm about to say i mean I, i've said this on a couple other um conversations i've had in other podcasts the last couple of days the staff it open outcry is top notch. And we met uh, last Monday, came up with a game plan, came up with steps on how to execute. And the folks that work at this place executed perfectly. There was no complaining. There was nothing but nothing but everyone everyone d- dedicating themselves to making sure that we can make this work and continue to keep um keep the doors open so that we can continue to pay people and make it through on the other side of this thing and the way people yeah. perform. If this keeps up, I, I we're going to, if, if, if the pace keeps up that we're at right now, where folks are still considering us maybe in a weekly rotation for food and beer, uh, I think we're going to make it through this thing. And, and that will be because of how everybody that works at this place came together and kept their, kept, kept their head down came in every day and busted their butt to make sure that we're that, that we're still providing great beer, food, and service to our guests, even though we're doing it in a completely different capacity. So I have nothing but gratitude for the people that work at this place. And, and so far, so good, but it's because of them. Uh, this is John Brand. He's from Open Outcry Brewing. He owns that business, and they have stayed open throughout this entire thing, and they delivered me a lot of delicious beer tonight because I, I'm trying to support local businesses. We don't have a brewery here in, in Evergreen Park, I know that breweries like to do fun stuff with their beer. And it's funny because my, my wife kept saying like, wow, John's on top of his stuff. He just released another beer and he just released another beer. And I'm like, sweetheart, they start brewing that way before. Like they were brewing that stuff months ago. 
before they knew this was going to happen. And this that's just probably what his normal release schedule was. But has Will come to you and said, like, when the time passes, I've got this, I've got this really funny name or something, something that I want to do that has to kind of co- commemorate this this time period? Or is that something that hasn't happened yet? Because I, I imagine Brewers coming out with things that will commemorate this time because brewers like to do that. They like to, they like to, they like to name their beers and do certain recipes as, as almost a historical marker. I've noticed. Well, that's what uh, think, Abita beer did. They had the restoration ale after Katrina. So. Exactly. Uh, we will, we, we, de- we definitely will. Um, and, and you, you mentioned Will Turner again. I mean, Will Turner, for, for folks that don't know, is considered one of the, um, you know, one, not only one of the best brewers in, in the city of Chicago, but one of the best brewers in the in the Midwest. He has, I think, close to 30 years of brewing experience now. He uh, was in Europe for some time, and then he brewed out in California in the 90s, came to Chicago in, uh, I want to say, the early 2000s and worked at Goose Island for maybe close to a decade and then went over to revolution. So the guy, the guy knows what he's doing. And um, in terms of our beer portfolio and the beers that we, that we brew and put out that that's pretty much all will Uh, will will probably come up with something fun to commemorate this once we get through it. And we'll come up with a name that's still consistent with our brand uh, that speaks to, you know, that this time, uh, but you're, you're right though, Chris, everything that's coming, everything that came out today and we're dropping a few more tomorrow, but everything that came out today has been sitting in fermenters for the last four to, you know, three to six weeks. That double IPA is a, that's, that's a longer beer uh, to make. So yeah, that, that, that beer has been, that, that beer has been waiting a while to get, to get into the draft lines. It's awesome too. I've been sitting here drinking the uh, Driscoll probably far too fast. <laughs> it just tastes, it tastes so good. Yeah. I've known, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to honestly express to everybody that's listening to the EP podcast. I am drinking way too much. They're, like my wife looked at me today at five o'clock in the afternoon. She's like, what else is there to do except to have a beer? I said, didn't we drink oh, last night? And she's like, there's, there's nothing to do. Like, it's so stressful. The children around the house are like, I need, I need to have a beer. That's a 12% beer, Chris. I don't know how long this podcast is. So you, 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 you <laughs> need, to, need to slow down a little bit. My thanks again to John Brandon, Open Outcry Brewing. Check them out, openoutcrybrewing.com. Or call them, 773-629-6055. We have a caller on the line. I can't tell with your 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 name here what, what your actual name is. So who am I talking to? Oh, I can tell you who this is. Uh, tell me who it Palestine. is. Greg Palestina. Greg Palestina. How do you know Greg Palestina? Greg Palestina. How you yes. doing? First of all, I don't have a headset in. Am I echoing to you guys? I want to make no, sure you sound you're fun. Fun. You're No, fun. you're fine. He's got an accent, Hannah. Is he from your hometown? Greg Palestina, how you A little further south. A little further south. So you're calling us from Louisiana. Yeah, 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 yeah. Way down here. Like, it's like, you know, we 30 feet from the Gulf. Uh. (laughs) (laughs) I love it. That's what I love the live podcast for. We had the guy from California call us last week, and I was like, what are you calling us for? He's like, I don't know. I saw this live podcast. I jumped in there. (laughs) I think it's hysterical. And now you have one of your friends who jumped on the line. So, Greg, you you know Hannah from way back when, when she was living in the bayou, eh? Uh, it was back in the UNO days, uh, in uh, TV class, and uh, we had a lot of projects together. We did a lot of, uh, I mean, not really any, not really any kind of schoolwork, because I mean, everything was so project oriented. UNO is University of New Orleans. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they had what they had what passes for a film, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, curriculum down there. Then okay, Katrina hit, and show. everybody ended up somewhere else. And uh, that's neither here nor there. Tell, tell, tell me, about tell me a life. little bit about like what Hannah was like when you knew her way back when. Give me a. <laughs> Give me a time frame. I want a time frame, and I want a good story out of you, Greg. Greg knows a lot about me. Okay, uh, let's see. Uh, time frame. <laughs> I guess we're talking pre-Katrina, which might not mean nothing to you guys, but means like pre-2005. So this had to be what, 02, 03 here? Okay. It was 02. Okay. I'm in Reno, Nevada at this point. Go ahead. <laughs> uh, I suppose, yeah, we're in our early 20s. Uh, it's college. Everything's new. Everything's exciting. We're in a TV class. I wanted to cast you in my music video. Oh my God. And she picked the only so guy in class awesome. that can't dance. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I look, it was, it was so stiff. Dude, I look like a breadstick dancing with Hannah uh, in, this, in this video. 
What was the song? It was, it from was Moulin Diamonds. Rouge, wasn't it? Yeah, Diamonds Are a Girl's Best Friend from Moulin Rouge. Yeah, so she picked an easy one for me, of course, you know, for the first try. <laughs> he, he showed up, he had his tux shirt on, his little bow tie, and just being all suave and Italian. Right, right. <laughs> I felt like such a dork. You did it, though, because, you did it, though, because he had to ask you, didn't you? Well, who, I mean, of course. Uh, yeah, I mean, you? like, look, um, she's married to one of my best friends in the entire world, but I imagine a young 20s Hannah uh, wasn't too bad on the eyes, and you were like, yeah, I'm, I'm going to I'm gonna dance for this girl. <laughs> uh, yeah, it didn't take a lot of coaxing, to be no. honest. I think I said yes <laughs> fairly quickly. I tried to play it cool. I'd be like, yeah, you know, I guess so. Yeah, I guess That's I'll dance for you, you, sweetheart. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah exactly. I, I mean, I, if I got to get a participation grade in this class, I suppose <laughs> I can do it. Now, I'm gonna, camera. I'm going to tell you how, how strong my friendship is with Greg here. Uh, after Katrina, he fulfilled a lifelong dream and got his pilot's license. So this is, what was it? It was around, yeah, it was Mardi Gras 2008 because we flew over King Arthur when it was rolling. He said, hey. Yeah. I can take you up on a plane any time. I said, when did you get your license? He goes, a couple of months ago. I said, all right, let's go. Oh, I love it, Greg. It's, Greg, it's Greg, not as hard to get as you think. Greg, they you hand want, them out. You want to know what the best? You want to know what the best thing about this entire interaction is? Is that yeah, I'm listening to Hannah tell the story about her friend Greg, and I'm picturing yeah. a young Greg thinking to himself. You know, I don't invite all the girls up on the plane. I invited you up for a reason. Like that's how I feel. Like you, <laughs> you danced for Hannah, and then you flew a plane for Hannah. And like I, you're right. I want to reach my. I want right. to reach out right now and give you a virtual hug because I feel like you made all of your moves here and you ended up in the friend zone, Greg. Dude, I mean that's every move I had. I fucking. <laughs> oh, I was gotta watch my mouth. Here. You know, you think you think a pilot's license is cheap? Right. Right. <laughs> Look what you did. Look what you did. And then you take this girl off of the plane. She's like, you're my Look, best friend. Called, and you're like, oh, I my God, me, shoot me in the I head. I called to be friendly. Now I'm getting mad. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm joking, no, man. He, he gave me the controls, which was crazy. <laughs> oh, my God. They you gave themselves. Him. Hannah. 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 What? If a man dances for you and then gets you on a plane after he gets a pilot license and lets you take his life into your hands by allowing you to fly the plane. Hands. Hannah, that's a move. He made a move. That was a suave move, and Greg, that move should have worked, and I hope you used it on other girls because somebody would have finally recognized it was a good move. But that was a move, well, He Hannah. had an amazing wife. He has an amazing it doesn't, wife. She's back then, amazing. he didn't have an amazing wife, and back then, that was yeah, a move. Yeah, back then, my wife was like freaking 15 years old. Exactly. <laughs> I feel like Greg, Greg and I are kindred spirits. We understand each other very well. Uh, you know, she made up for it. She did the thriller dance uh, uh, on my birthday one year. I did the thriller dance on his birthday. Oh, every my year goodness. Oh, I mean, what more could a guy ask for, really? This is uh, the best. Oh. We watched right. The Water Boy. We love Water Boy. Craig, before I, before I let you go here, and, uh, and I appreciate you calling up, just give us a quick update. Uh, where are you in Louisiana, and what is life like down there right now? Because in Illinois here, we're at, we got a stay at home order and we're all going a little stir crazy. So what's things like down there in Louisiana? Um, luckily enough to avoid the stir crazy thing, uh, they consider construction workers essential and being a land surveyor, they, they, they let me slide. They let me out on the roads and everything like that. They don't really bother you. Uh, toilet paper and bread is at a minimum. And you think by now the hoarders would have enough, like, and it's the weirdest thing to panic over because, I mean, I get it. Everybody likes toilet paper. It's not like nobody's not buying it. But, like, you know, we should be done. And, like, it's weird. You can't you can't eat toilet paper. We should be stocking up on... There's, there's burger meat and pork chops and steaks overflowing in the aisles. But we can't get toilet paper and paper towels and napkins. Greg, I appreciate you checking in. I'm going to let you go here so we can ramp up the show. But uh, uh, thanks for checking in. And I'm sorry that all of your moves on Hannah and your youth did not work out for you. <laughs> we were friends. <laughs> another show is wrapped up. Another show's in the books. Another show is wrapped up. And then by the looks, it's going to be a good one. And we'll see you next week. And the nude is basement. And the nude is basement. Another show is wrapped up. Another show is wrapped up. Another show is wrapped up, and it's in the books. Another show is wrapped up. Another show is wrapped up, and by the looks, it's gonna be a good one. New is basement. Broadcast basement.
London is basement The broad basement Slancha The EP Podcast Heard everywhere podcasts can be found And always at the eppodcast.com